perfect. So today on The Journey Within, I have the incredible Raw Vegan. I want to, I'm going to dub you the queen. <laughs> I'll take it at my age. I can take it. <laughs> right? Yeah. Queen. Thank you. You <laughs> totally deserve the title. Um, I will let Karen introduce herself and let you guys know um, kind of what she's been up to before we dive deep into her story and all the other wisdom that she can share with us. Sure. Uh, well, I'm Karen Calabrese. I've been in this holistic world probably before it was even called that. I've been doing this for about 50 years now. And um, it's been an exciting journey of evolution and learning. And uh, because I received such wonderful results for myself, uh, I decided that it was something that I wanted and needed to share with others. So I started about 45 years ago with little meetings in my home, uh, sharing the wisdom that I learned from Dr. Ann Wigmore and Victoria Sp uh, Kobensis. They were the beginners of the raw food movement. A lot of people don't even know who they are anymore. Dr. Wigmore discovered wheatgrass for us. Uh, Victoria discovered um, sunflower sprouts and um, uh, um, buckwheat growth, uh, sprouts, and all this, and it was all done at her Wellness Institute in Boston back in the 60s. So, uh, and they were my teachers uh, primarily, and then Dr. Gabriel Cousins. I've learned from a lot of people over the years that were doing it a thousand years ago, and here I am, the thousand-year-old person now is doing it. That's incredible. I, um, I think the biggest thing for me and your entire I don't want to say journey because I don't think we ever finish. We're always growing exactly. and evolving. But the one thing that I love that you say is you don't consider yourself a victim at oh, all. No. And no. you talk about it like, no, that's just not part of my vocabulary. Like that does not enter my space. And you have gone through a lot. <laughs> and that I'm not just saying that like, I was recently listening to um, some podcasts that you did, and I there was just there was stuff I didn't even know. Oh, oh my! God. Oh, the one that I did with um, what's his name, Pat, where they were talking about when the women that have been sexually molested yeah. and all this. Yeah, I, I got very real on that one. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, well, but you know why? Because it's it's all part of my evolution. You know, I, I the thing that I say over and over again now, in just about every lecture I do or speech is. I don't believe we're here to have a thousand, thousands of Instagram followers to have the perfect hair, the perfect face, the perfect clothes, all the money in the world, perfect house, children, family. We're here to evolve. And some of us have more evolution to uh, conquer and gain than others. I think I was given a whole bunch <laughs> since birth. Um, but yeah, we're here to evolve. And if you're if you're placed in a position to have the wisdom to realize this is what's going on with you, you make it through it. Now, I'm not going to say I had that wisdom because I always say God takes care of fools and children and I'm not a child. So I just wasn't smart enough to realize how bad things were uh, a great deal of the time until I look backwards and I see what I went through and I go, oh my goodness, you know, wow. Yeah, I guess that was a bit of a challenge. But um, my kids used to joke and say, my mom is so positive, you could send her a, a pile of dog crap and she'd just go, where's the puppy? You know, so <laughs> I think it's just part of who I am. I always see the good and everything until I'm slapped in the face with the other and then I just keep moving on because anything else causes wrinkles, uh, <laughs> anything else causes yeast in your body. Uh, and I'm just not willing to take on, because whatever you're taking on, even fear and victimization, isn't hurting anybody else out there it's only it's like a boomerang it comes back to you and once you have that realization you just have to understand life happens you just got to go with the flow and when the flow is there and it works that's what you're doing when it's not you just go in another direction until it does again okay i just need to ask what's your sign how are you like oh <laughs> <laughs> Five planets in Aries with a Virgo rising. What was not my, my expecting sun, the Virgo? My, moon, my sun. My, well, if you came to my house and looked at my closet. Oh, so. okay. <laughs> <laughs> Obsessive compulsive slightly. But uh, five planets, my sun, my moon, my everything is in Aries, but I'm on the cusp of Aries Taurus. So Ooh, I was okay. born at 3.30 in the afternoon when it changes over on April 20th. 
which now April 20th has all other kinds of meanings now too. It used to just be my birthday and Hitler's and Queen Elizabeth. Now it's a happy day for the world. <laughs> I think, wow, they picked my birthday for that. That's pretty cool. I was actually looking at that. I'm like, I wonder if she laughs about it because you <laughs> grew up when, I mean, and you say this, uh, you said that in that interview with Pat, um, Pat, you were like, I would wake up and have a joint in my mouth. So you're very right. honest. You're not trying to put transparent. You, yeah. Honest and transparent about everything. And the fact that you can literally be so, I don't want to say, I'm sure that when you were going through it, you weren't like, ha, 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 this is great. <laughs> no. <laughs> but you're just, no. I was listening to you talk about your, your son, and I'm like, I can't imagine that. And, I mean, I'm sure it wasn't like that right away, but you, you were able to, the way that you speak about it, it's almost like a gift, not... Well, it, it probably was the hardest thing that I've ever gone through in my life uh, because losing a child is like losing a limb, a piece of you. But I also realized who he was. Uh, he was such a very strong empath without the knowledge or direction of where to take it. And of course, I'm his mother. I can't give it to him. Do you know what I mean? And the world was just a very harsh place for him. It really was. He was a beautiful soul, but you know what, he's going to come back, maybe, maybe if he's lucky, he won't, but, you know, and um, he, he, what he did while he was here, the impact he had was pretty profound, especially for me and our family, so, but it also helped um, legitimize my feelings about how the world handles illness and, and things like that, because, you know, he started having seizures at a very young age, seven months old, he had his first seizure, and then he continued to have them. And uh, we took him to the doctors and they put him on Dilantin and he continued to have seizures and they put him on um, phenobarbital and he continued to have seizures. And this was really like a very strong part of my beginning because uh, he was on all these drugs and it was changing his personality and he was still having seizures. And I thought, wow, this is this isn't right. My mother had already kind of started my journey. So what I did was I made my house totally chemical free uh, because he was so susceptible. We could go in a uh, department store and the buzzing from the escalators actually affected his brain. He could hear it. And so I made the connection with the chemicals in his system and how he was more uh, in, in tune to these things. So I made my house chemical free. I made my house sugar free and he stopped having seizures. So that was a strong introduction for me into the medical profession doesn't have all of our answers, you know? Um, and so I took him off the medication and that was part of my first divorce because my husband was so upset with me for taking my, our kid off medication. Uh, and um, he, he did fine until he, he hit uh, junior high and started feeding himself and, you know, it all turned around, but that was his journey, you know? That was his journey. Um, I... I was diagnosed with bipolar disorder when I was 18. So was when, time, yeah. when I heard that, I was just like, wow, the universe literally put you in my path because- It's all diet. It's all diet. And what you were just saying about what you did, I mean, for him, it was, you started it off because of seizures. My mom, she tried the Western big pharma approach because she was told that was the only way you didn't, she didn't know any better. And it wasn't until they were like, well, we have run out of options and the medication we're giving her isn't getting her to stop hallucinating or anything. So you can keep putting her to sleep. That's all we can kind of give you. And she started to do her own research and started to give me cold pressed juices at home and completely converted everything. And I'm no longer um, raw vegan, but I was for a very big part of my journey because it, it is, it, it's so much. How do we lose you? Um, <laughs> actually, <laughs> recently, um, I started doing, I was still taking medication for my thyroid. That's the only thing I've still been on. And I Irish moss. didn't help. I don't know why. How long did you do it? Oh man, years. I would, that was the one thing I would fight with doctors for because they were like, there's nothing wrong with taking thyroid medication. I'm like, it's made in a lab. I don't want it. And I tried for three years. 
and just okay so let me tell you this because i had a huge thing in my throat oh i'm so glad uh, we're talking about this <laughs> to be thyroid gourd or hashimoto's there was a number of things but uh in my philosophy i don't get diagnosed so i didn't go to the doctor mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. that's when i developed my systemic enzyme and so it took five years but i got rid of it and I do the Irish moss. That's it. So, you know, the thing of it is holistic healing is going to take a lot longer than what our expectations are. Because if you had it for years, if you had it more than three years, it could take yeah. more than three years to go away. So often the motivation isn't there because we have this little birdie in our ears saying, but I've done it for two years. I've done it for three months, but I've, but you know, if you were born with it and you kind of ate your way down to here or whatever like it, it's going to take you to going through a lot of that to get back up there. So I would say get back on the bandwagon, you know, as close as you can start a process because it took me five years, but I got rid of mine. Hmm. I have to, I'm going to look into it more. I, I don't know if you've heard of Karen Hurd. She's, the bean protocol um lady and honestly i'm just eating a lot of beans um but essentially the, you soak them first yeah i soak them first um i so i sprout my garbanzo beans just because i perfect probably such, i did that for so long it's just well you should sprout all beans yeah. before you eat them or um, soak them yeah, it makes such a big difference and people don't realize mm -hmm. that um but she talks about the soluble fiber it um to your poop as gross as this is actually no you talk about poop in all of your seminars of like, this is, like, totally <laughs> um but yeah it's so it like sticks to your poop to get rid of all the excess hormones and everything that you have basically you're recycling in your body because if your liver isn't getting rid of it it's staying in your body and i've been on it seven months and I did not tell my mom that I was going to stop taking my thyroid medication. I just did it without saying anything. And after she started to see it, she's like, oh my God, you're you've been seeing, noticing some things. I still couldn't get rid of the excess hair growth from here and here. It went away. So I want to get to a place, she says, a couple of more months where I'm okay. at a baseline and then I can go back to um, vegan. I, I miss oh. it. I, I miss it. So you're not even vegan through this process? I'm right now vegetarian. Okay. Which for me was really weird. I'm not going to lie. Mm -hmm. um, I've been eating fruit and a lot of fruit for a long time. And that was the first thing she took off was any natural sugars to kind of get everything back to baseline. And it sucks. I'm like, I won't. Well, I will throw in one other thing. You know, there is so much of the, the food and all, but very often those of us that uh, have challenges around the throat and the thyroid, mm -hmm. so much of that has to do with our voice, our inner voice and our outer voice and how we're heard or feel we're heard or what we're projecting. So I might look into some Louise Hay or some of that other metaphysical stuff of the throat and stuff to work on that in addition to what you're doing. I actually think I, I need to do more chakra work. It's been popping up a lot lately. So definitely something I feel like. This is a lot of mucus too from holding on to all the wrong stuff for too long. So you'll check it out. I'm not going to give you a, I'm not going to give you a session now, but oh, you'll no, check yeah. it out. You're smart enough. You'll figure it out. But I would look into that also. Definitely. I mean, it's, it's been a process definitely mm -hmm. for sure. And I have realized this year that I had a lot of suppressed anger that turned into aggression so mm -hmm. i i can see i can definitely see it and when is your birthday i'm a gemini <laughs> That's oh, okay <laughs> yeah I'll, I'll tell you gemini um sun and sagittarius moon and rising <laughs> and when you get that people are like oh yeah you make sense i'm like yeah it makes sense after that <laughs> <laughs> right. but yeah no um i really want to talk about how much your drive like you have been knocked down. Your childhood was really tough. Your mom's story, again, like you literally were like knocked down and you even say that you were born with shit on you. So it's just, right. <laughs> how are you so, how do you keep going? How after closing, having restaurants closed, literally like you're- You know, I, I, I wish I could give you a formula, but like I said, God takes care of fools and children. And I never realized how horrible off I am until I look back at it. I mean, 
you know, it doesn't occur to me. Well, I, I will say this. My mother brought me up with when I would say, Mommy, I can't do this or I can't do that. And she'd go, there's no such word as can't in the human language. And I think that's an old slave thing, too. I think that was brought about during then. I don't know. But my mother would always say, there's no such word as can't. I, I won't allow her to hear it. And my grandfather always said, never let the fact that you are a woman or African-American be the reason for you not accomplishing anything. And so I guess those were always playing in my brain. So I just figured I can't not do what I'm supposed to do. And I, can't, I have no excuses not to. So I was just kind of brought up with that. And then, you know, I'm an only child. So I spent a lot of time by myself and figuring things out. Um, and I've read thousands of books. I used to read the encyclopedia as a child. You know, no way. For fun. Oh, so uh, I play classical piano. I, I just always, it just has never occurred to me not to get up and do something. It just isn't a part of my makeup. So I don't think there's anything special. It's just that I was born with a mission and I was given all these challenges along the way to make the mission stronger and stronger or more the, the vision more visible. Mm -hmm. And I just do it. <laughs> and I think how I eat too does have a lot to do with it. Yeah, so I was I actually going to go into that. Yes, I, I believe the food, because my body isn't working so hard to try and assimilate and get rid of and reduce stuff that it doesn't need to work with. You know, our bodies know what they're supposed to have. We're born knowing how to take care of ourselves. There's a, a menu for how humans are supposed to eat, period. Yeah. There is no if, ands, or maybe, or science says this. No, there is a menu. We are supposed to eat raw living foods for raw living cells in our body. Nothing else is supposed to work. If things start to go out of balance, it's because what our mothers were eating before we were born and our grandmothers and great-grandmothers and so forth. But there is a menu for human beings. And I, I think getting to the menu and remaining on the menu is the challenge. And a million things can happen along the way. I've had, you know, being a raw foodist at one point, I had a lump in my breast. Uh, I had the thing in my throat. I've had a lot of challenges, even though I'm raw, but I haven't, I've stuck to it and maybe added to it in other ways, you know, more chlorophyll, more this, more that, more colonics, more hyperbaric chambers, more outside stuff. But I have had challenges along the way, uh, health-wise also, many of them. I'm going through something right now with my mouth, and that's totally my responsibility, you know, and I am having to go through the regular methods for that. But um, I think getting the menu, realizing what it is for human beings, and then finding the steps to make it practical to keep it in practice. And you have to take the steps along the way. And to me, unfortunately, in this world we live in today, instant everything, instant detox, instant this, instant that, um, I think it's taken a toll on humanity because people don't understand. It took nine months for you to get here. You can't instantly do anything, okay? This human creation, it took time. Yeah. And uh, everybody is expecting instant and everybody's following instant. Uh, Fortunately, I was at a different time. I had to take the steps. I learned from the best taking the steps, but I think the challenge is finding a way to keep it practical, to keep it in practice so you can be consistent. Because I, when I had the restaurant, I would have people come in and go, oh, give me a shot of wheatgrass, you know, and they were big smiles on their face. Hey, I had some wheatgrass today. And it just, but what did you have the rest of the week? And what did you have before? And what are you going to have the rest of the month? That one shot of wheatgrass is I'm saying, but we have this mental thing. Well, I was healthy for a week, or I did this, or I had a little of this. It's building on and finding the ways to stay with it. And this is the challenge I find with clients, uh, and which is why I started the classes. Because when you're working in a group situation, there's kind of that peer pressure, you know, and everybody's showing up every week, and you got to talk about what you did, and you can't whine and complain. Well, you know, I didn't get a chance this week. You're hearing everybody, and it's just a different world. So I'm trying to work it out so I can work with people in this new instant world. I'm not happy about it, but I'm doing <laughs> because I like results. Yeah. And, uh, I, I'm, I'm doing the best that I can, and I have people working with me, helping me to get over that hump and realize that I do have to speed things up a little bit, but and accept the fact that people aren't get, going to get the results they used to get in the classes I gave. 
and uh, I just have to find a way around it. I'm doing it. You know, it's just another little hurdle to tiptoe over, not around, but over and get to the other side. Ooh, I like that. Not tip around, but tip over. That's really powerful. Do you feel like you ever, do you see yourself ending like with working or do you just see, no. I, I heard you say that you're going to be alive to 120. So I'm just like, are you going to be working to 120? Well, here's the deal. But the other little joke I make is if I had to work, I'd kill myself. So this, <laughs> is not, this isn't like work to me. You know, it's, it comes so naturally to me that I know that this is what I, you know, we're all put here with a purpose. And finding that purpose and living that purpose is the design that we're supposed to have with all the little stuff that happens along the way. So I was fortunate enough to find my purpose and feel very strongly in this is what I'm supposed to be doing. It, it never even occurs to me not to do it, that I wouldn't do it. Uh, when I lost everything and I was at my home, I was still giving advice and talking to people. And it just never occurs to me not to do this. In fact, I have to say to people, do you want me to tell you? Because I'm ready to tell you right away what to do. You know, so I have to, my husband said a long time ago, he says, why don't you ask people, do you really want to know? <laughs> because everybody doesn't want to know what you have to tell them. And that's true. Um, so I, it, it never occurs to me that I'll stop. I, I may find different ways. Like I've, I'm having to find a different way now, not by choice, yeah. but because of the way of what's going on in the world. And, you know, it's kind of like Corona kind of came to, make people, I think in a lot of ways, the positive aspects of it is making people think about their own wellness, their internal environment, people who never would have thought about it before. It's making people more aware of their surroundings because you don't have all the chatter around unless you have the TV on all day. So it's, it, I think, I kind of don't tell anybody, I'm kind of calling it St. Corona because it's kind of, <laughs> it's kind of changing the world, even though it seems horrible, in a positive way for those who get it. But I feel like we need to break in order to reborn or, or you know. Oh, absolutely. Every I, single person that's. You have to go backwards before you go forwards. I use that in my lectures. You know, when you're a dancer, I, I'm a dancer. You have to break down the muscle in your ankles before they get strong enough to go on point. You have to break down before you build up. And that's what so many people don't want to experience anymore either. It's like, okay, I'm taking this, I gotta better, 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 better. But you do go through challenges to get better. That's the whole process. That's how you evolve. When yeah. it just stays perfect, you don't learn anything. No. I I feel like for me, and this is probably going back to throw chakra and speaking, that has been something that I've this year, I'm not trying to dismiss people's pain or struggle or there's so much going on but everything that has come to light were things that we already had to deal with like i i right now everybody's talking amazon target and it's like well amazon and target were people were buying from them beforehand like <laughs> you know i so are you only gonna start buying from small businesses now or are you shifting how you shop in general like for me, when people were freaking out about hand sanitizer, I was just like, were you not washing your hands before? I'm very confused about this. Like, <laughs> well, if you saw me looking around, I was looking for my phone because there was something on a church I passed this morning uh -huh. like, and I took a picture of it. This was so beautiful. I'm trying to remember. I, I've got to remember because the churches out where I live, they put signs up mm -hmm. and this was on the church this morning and I just loved it. It said, Life has no remote. Get up and change it yourself. Oh, yes. <laughs> I love that. Life doesn't have, you got to get up and change it yourself. You really do. <laughs> oh, gosh, man. I, I, I just, I think one of the reasons why I was so intrigued with you was because right now it's so easy to focus on everything bad that's happening and all the yeah. negative and all of that. And to me, it's like, we had homeless people in 2019. Racism was happening in 2019. Trump was stupid in 2019. Like all of these things were there. Why did it take a global pandemic for us to wake up and realize that? Because that's what we needed. <laughs> because so, everything was so far away from reality that Mother Nature said, okay, enough. I'm sending you indoors. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because you ruined my soil, my air, 
my water. You go inside, okay? The animals can be outside because mm -hmm. they know how to handle the earth right? You get indoors, put a mask on your face, breathe in your own toxicity so you can learn something new. Yes, I do agree with that. Yes, I laugh um, with the mask thing. And I have people that will literally send me articles. And my, I always respond with who's funding this? <laughs> and what is their objective? Be well, I do put it on. I put on a mask just to make my fellow humans feel comfortable. Yes. And I have friends that don't. And I understand that. But for me, I'm, if it's not going to harm me, because I'm not going to walk around and within my house or in my car like some people do. Yeah. If I, if I can make somebody feel comfortable and it doesn't take away from me, I'm going to do it. Right. Even though there's a statement to be made and I have very close friends who refuse to put them on and I understand the statement they're making. So you need both kinds of people in the world too. I will put my mask on for... But. Oh, no. I'm, I, I, like, my mom laughs at me because she's like, I'm waiting for you to, like, pick a fight with someone. I'm like, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> and that would be me. I would just be like, really? <laughs> like, right. I, I do laugh sometimes. I'm walking down the street, like, walking around my neighborhood, and I'll have someone that literally will cross the street. And I'm just like, all right, cool. You do you, man. Well, I like the people in the car by themselves with the window rolled oh, up. Oh, <laughs> that is the best part. Or when I'm literally like, I really want to knock and just be like, why are you wearing a mask in your own car? by yourself by yourself but, i know i love it so to me the mask thing it's more of like if you need to do it because it makes you feel safe and you don't want to cause more um social right. turmoil then that's great but i'm still like why are you wearing a mask in your house why are you wearing a mask in your car because those are the people that will follow what they need to be told. And you're going to have those people. Or my friend, Johnny Juicer calls it a muzzle. <laughs> oh me man. I, when I saw that he posted, I was just like, <laughs> can I like just video you and share this with everyone? <laughs> no, it is. I, I was talking to someone and they were, they made a, a joke. Imagine um, talking to your kids 30 years from now and them asking you, mom, what's, wh how come I, you see people's faces in the pictures of you when you were 30 and it's like, oh yeah, right. back then we actually <laughs> did not wear masks. Now everyone does. You know, I don't have my, it's not right here, but I actually bought the mask like they have for the deaf. So you can see my smile in my mouth. It's plastic. So I don't hide my smile because I like to smile at people. I smile at strangers all the time, you know. So I bought the kind for the deaf and you can see my, my Ooh, I need a, I have to get that one. I was, I had like, I miss connection. I'm someone yeah. that talks to everyone, like walking down the street at the supermarket and now everyone's so just fearful. And I was walking and it was the most beautiful interaction. Um, and I think I just smile but I forget sometimes that I'm wearing a mask and people can't see me smiling. But someone was like, oh, you're smiling at me. Thank you. And I was just like, you can tell. She was like, yeah. yes, your energy, you just lit up. And I'm like, oh, I'm so glad. Can you, can you realize what that's, I mean, we can't touch, we can't smile. Yes. That's the whole human condition. It is. It's, but we'll, we will make it through this also. And, oh, we will. We will make it through better and stronger as human beings because that's what it's all about definitely the people who get it will get it those who don't don't and that's the way of life you know it is how do you deal with imposter syndrome or does it ever come up or not anymore because you've been doing this for so long what i don't explain what you mean by that so just when people we do have so such polarized views like that's yes. just human nature and there's plant-based, vegan, then you have vegetarian, oh. then you have paleo, you have keto, and right. everyone's throwing what's right and what's wrong. How do you deal with You know how that? I deal with it? Yeah, I deal with it very simply. You know, I absolutely love zebras. I think they're the most beautiful animal on the planet, but I would be bored silly if we had nothing but zebras on the planet. <laughs> so, viva la difference. You need many flowers in the field. And this is how we get our evolution by what we choose to learn and grow from around us. So I don't call them imposters. I are what I call them. This is, this is their station and place in life. And I'm not putting it up here or down here. And this is what the world is all about. We come from many species, many types, but it's finding that place in your heart where you can find an acceptance of other views 
and thoughts. I tell the story one day, um, I have a, a wellness spa, a wellness center, and there was a guy sitting in the center and he had on a t-shirt and it had uh, two rifles on it and it said death to the infidels. And I'm sure his girlfriend was here having a colonic, he wasn't. And he was sitting there and my dog who goes to work with me, he was all over and he was licking him and he was petting him. And you know, it was just so sweet to watch. And so I said, what does this mean? And he didn't want to tell me, you know, because I'm African-American. The girl at my desk was African-American. You could tell he wasn't in his comfort zone necessarily. And I said, no, you can tell me. And he says, well, you know, all these people coming in our country that don't belong here. But I said, oh, I said, okay. I said, you have a natural affinity with dogs, don't you? And he said, yeah, and he got a big smile on his face. So it was finding a common ground between us because there are a lot of vegans or I've had a couple of raw foodists who are terrified of my dog and don't want him near him. Do you know oh, what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's finding that commonality. It's finding that common ground on where we can bond. We don't all have to agree and be in the same place. It would be boring world. I really, but if you can find a common ground with every person you meet. I mean, I would say a great deal of my friends, especially our meat eaters, they aren't vegan raw foodists, you know, they eat meat, they live in another world than me, but there's a common bond, bond in other arenas. And I think that's part of our process in life, finding where you can find a connection and you don't find a connection everywhere and that's okay too. But it doesn't have to be based on the label that you've given yourself. You know, does it come from your heart? Does it come from your soul or your, your feelings? You can have a connection. I think mean, I've got three very close people to me that have AK-47s in their back seats of their car, you know, with all of this going on. I'm terrified of guns, Not just the whole concept of them, you know, but they're very dear close people to me, you know, so it's finding the commonality. And I think that's part of the journey that we're on here is to find a way where you can connect oh, without yeah. being the same. That's, that's beautiful. Yeah, because we do need to kind of, it's not about changing people. It's about recognizing oh, no. them and letting them be who they are. If somebody had told me I would be this way 50 years ago, I would have said you were out of your mind. You know, <laughs> so I had to grow into who I am and we have to allow everybody to do that. I love that. Yeah, because you didn't eat at all remotely um, healthy or anything like this, if from well, what I've read. <laughs> No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Your face, I love it. <laughs> I can remember I went someplace and somebody had done a meatloaf with wheat germ in it. And I went, oh, wheat germ in a meat. You know, give me the meat without the wheat germ. <laughs> you know? So, what so much is Remember, we have to remember where we were, too. Yeah. Instead of like, this is how I am, this is what I do, this is what I believe in, and you better get there this moment, too, yesterday, because yeah. yeah. I'm here. And so many of the young warriors, that's where they are, and God bless them, you know, you have to have all kinds, but uh, it's finding a common ground, I think is the most important as human beings that we have to live for, is finding a common ground with our fellow human beings. No, yeah, and I think that's a really big message for this year of finding common ground with everyone, not... Mm -hmm. Even, I, I even say this, I was talking to a friend about this. I was like, even finding common ground with Trump. She was like, well, what? I'm gonna tell you something. He needs a colonic. Okay, let's get it. <laughs> and we could start to change a little bit. But I have to tell you something, and I angered a couple of my friends with this, but I actually read Mary Trump's book, his niece. How was it? And I have to tell you, I felt so sorry for him after I read that. Nobody has ever loved this man. Of course, he's a horrible human being, and it isn't that he's a Republican. He's just not mm -hmm. a good human being, good heart. But nobody ever loved, not his mother, not his mm -hmm. father. He never had any love. So this is the product of that. So in some ways, my heart goes out to this human being because he's never known real love. I mean, he's got the women that he's paid forever. But to have someone really love him, I don't think he knows what that, I don't think he knows it exists. Well, I mean, and when you don't have those needs met, you, you're you getting them met right. in external ways and it's not. So, yeah, I think he's a horrible human being, but in a lot of ways, my heart goes out to him. I feel bad for him. I feel worse for us because of him. <laughs> I do feel I mean, bad for him. I, that was something I, I remember I saw the book when I was going to get it, but then I was like, eh, um, I have a lot to read. I'll get it soon. And I kept thinking, because to me, you, I don't believe that 
we wake up one day, we're like, I want to be, excuse my language, an ass. Like, we don't wake up like that. It's learned behaviors that you picked up somewhere, um, need, needs not being met. And his father was worse than him, actually. Ex that's and what so I was... he had no choice, yeah. I so like I read her... Yeah. My oh, daughter gave it to my husband. Oh, oh no, my daughter. I didn't buy the. My daughter gave it to my husband for a Father's Day gift, the book. Aww. But uh, it was really, and she wasn't going out like being horrible about him. She was just talking very matter of factly about what his childhood was like and what was rewarded and whatever. And it's very sad when you think about it. When I think about how I raised my children with all the love, I couldn't kiss them enough or hug them enough or, or you know, praise them for a mud thing they brought in the house and did, you know. Uh, so everybody's got an agenda behind them and um, it's finding a common ground or finding a way to bring, to keep humanity within you for the humanity around you. Yeah, no, definitely. I want to ask you a little bit about trust. Um, I, how do you trust people? <laughs> like you, you know, you have been burned by so many people. I'm just in awe. Yeah. And you've been married for, I mean, it, it has to be more than 30 years. 37 um, I've been. Like yeah. you've been with, and this is your second marriage and your first one was mentally and physically abusive. So how, I know that you say that. Well, but, but, but we know, trust, it took me 10 years to marry him. We dated for 10 years before oh, I married. Oh, no way, really? Yeah. Wow. No, but you know what it is too? Once again, there's, you know, first of all, I think I'm very intuitive. And I always say maybe 15% of the time I'm wrong in trusting people. Uh, and and I, I would stick with that. It, it, it may vary here and there, but I think there's a lesson to be learned with everything, no matter how it turns out. I think that, once again, I don't know how to you know like my husband and my daughter the kind of people you got to prove yourself to them they don't think anything is right about you till you prove yourself to them you're like that too yeah i'm the opposite i'm going to trust you 100 percent till you prove to me otherwise do you think that but i think i'm just born that way okay. i don't i was going to say i'm like just that is so interesting what's your daughter sign i'm curious <laughs> A Libra. Oh my God, no way. And my husband is a Libra also. I'm like intrigued on how, wait, what was your son, if you don't mind me asking? Leo. Oh my goodness. See, like yeah. that, I could totally see you guys because you're both fire. But them, my mom's a Libra and half the time I'm just like, oh my God, can you please make up your mind? <laughs> They put a box inside of 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 a box. And then they're going to try and decide what to do with all those boxes. Yes. yes. <laughs> and me, I'm like, I'm just going to do it. Like I would make the joke. My husband and I are like, I go, come on, honey, let's jump off this cliff. I learned to fly. And he goes, let me put down a few nets first. <laughs> I'm under that and under that. So, yeah. That is so interesting. Wow. <laughs> Sorry, I need, I, I write things down because as a true sure. Gemini, I have zero sense of time and get really distracted easily. <laughs> yeah. well. <laughs> so I want to know more of like, how would you, right now with everything going on, I don't want to dive too much into like Corona or anything like that, but it was more of what could you tell people about how they can make subtle shifts with eating raw vegan to help sure. with their immunity? And well, here's the deal. First of all, take baby steps. If this isn't within your, you know, assess yourself, assess what you're going to be able to be consistent with. And most people don't because most people get a plan. I'm going to do this and they do it for a week and then they don't do it. And then they do it for a day and then they don't do it. So I think getting a true assessment of who you are, which is part of staying inside and getting to know yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you've been a big meat eater all along, then try just giving up dairy, you know? and try doing that for a week or two. And I think what we need to do is learn to use your own body as a laboratory and pay attention. And this is what most people don't do. They don't pay attention to themselves. You know, uh, they're just used to grabbing, going, doing, and they're not paying attention to how it feels. And then the world is set up so you can blame it on everything else. They can blame it on Corona. They can blame it on somebody sneezing near them. They can blame it on the cold weather. They can, oh, I went outside with wet hair, you know, and they're not paying attention to what they ate 
from what they did and how they felt and how they treated someone. So I think I would tell people to find steps that they feel that they could make a commitment to for a week. I'd also tell them they could sign up and do a program with me or do one of my I was detoxes. actually going to say, like, real, <laughs> but, real quick, <laughs> plug yourself in. <laughs> just do one of my detoxes because I do work that way through that. But um, find um, adds a, a good form of green to your diet because I always say there's a reason God put so many greens on the earth and it's not for picnics, it's for our health and our vitality. So, of course, I have a bunch of green products that, you know, I recommend. Uh, so find a good green that works for you. I do them all, but find one that you can afford and can do consistently. Uh, I would say find little things to give yourself a week. I'm not going to do this for a week. Don't say I'm giving up dairy. I'm giving, I'm going to be a vegetarian because it becomes overwhelming. But if you can find little pockets, little segments to take you over little bridges, you can keep it, continue it. So I would give up dairy and I would give up red meat and then I would go to the chicken and fish or maybe you're ready to be a, a vegan and then start transitioning into more living foods, you know? And so instead of going like you, you were before we, when you're ready to go back, I would go, you know what? I'm going to be raw all day and maybe have a cooked meal later. But if you've been raw all day, you're not that hungry by the evening and you'll eat less of whatever you gave yourself permission for. Or maybe you say, I'm going to be all raw and just cooked on the weekend. Give yourself attainable goals instead of a big picture that you have to overwhelm yourself with and then you won't do it. Yeah. Uh, I would say read everything you can. There's pros and cons to everything, but your inner world will tell you what's right for you. Uh, I would definitely say follow me because I got a lot of good advice. I've been doing it for 50 years. It isn't stuff I just read in a book, but there are a lot of good people out there. I, I'm not saying I'm the only one. There are many roads to the top of the mountain, but find a good green that you can live with. We have a chlorella green living fiber that I believe in. We have my green meal we have um, oh by the way for the corona i do have an oxygen drop if you're not near my hyperbaric chamber to use awesome. because viruses can't live in oxygen you know and one of the reasons i don't worry i'm eating only oxygenated foods i have a hyperbaric chamber i have these oxygen drops so find something or a person that resonates with you mm -hmm. that you feel when they talk to you it feels right because we all hear right in a different way from different people uh, if it feels right, you do it and give yourself room to evolve. Don't expect to get there overnight. Oh, yeah. I love that. Because you talk about how yours was an ongoing journey and it was. Oh, sure. I didn't read a book one day and go, oh, I need to be a raw Buddhist. <laughs> you know, it was, a, it was a process. Absolutely. And I think that's maybe one of the stronger challenges right now that people aren't willing to use a process to get to the next step they weren't instant and we've been kind of set up for that you know that's why i like the church saying you know don't life doesn't have a remote get up and do it yeah no it's it's true i think we are in a culture now where we expect everything to happen and i include myself immediately yeah. and we want that instant gratification um like i honestly hadn't realized how much i was still soothing with food until this year with lockdown that I would reach towards more sugary, even if it was still natural options. Okay, like, but I got an answer for that. It's okay. Just only have, you can have a thousand raw desserts in your house and don't say I'm not having sugar. Have a thousand raw desserts and say, oh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. You can even get diet cheesecakes now in, in Walmart or, or Target. You know, just have, flood yourself with it. Don't say I'm going to limit or I only have this month. If you need to Besides yourself with sugar, then you have all the raw desserts around the but pretty soon you won't need it because you filled in those emotional holes. No, yeah, and that's, it's, it's a really big thing. But I, I, I brought it up because I feel like we do um, typically tend to soothe with food and we're not realizing that we're in this autopilot of, oh, I need this, but it's actually, no, you're just used to this. So I was more talking about when you're making all of these changes, it can be overwhelming because we want to go from zero to a hundred overnight. And we didn't, our world was not, did not occur overnight. And just like you said, you didn't pop up out of your mom's when she's like, oh, here, I made you. And now you're out the next day. It doesn't happen. Like no, the that. other problem too with instant gratification is 
you get it instantly, then you need something else, then you need something else, then you need something else. And you never get satisfied because you always need something else. When you take the time to get it, it settles on a cellular level in a different way and you don't need as much. Mm. You're so and, full of so much stuff. Well, I'm 74 years old, I should be. <laughs> okay, I want to look like you. I saw your, you were sharing the mask thing yesterday on Instagram and I'm like, I literally was like, mom, we need to get one of these. And she's like, why? I'm like, look at her skin, mom, look at her skin. That's a piece of it, and it's a big piece of it, but it's how I eat, it's that I detox, and even though I'm 100% raw, I, I don't drink, smoke, or do drugs, I still detox my body a minimum of four times a year. Really? Really, because I'm living in a very toxic world, Could and I don't have control. On that? Yeah, well, you're driving behind buses, you're taking in chemicals. If you get your clothes dry cleaned, you're taking in chemicals through your skin. You may be buying organic food, but the organic farm is right next to the other farm. You know, the wind doesn't stop here. You're around toxic people who aren't getting it. You're, I mean, there's a zillion ways we're taking in toxicity every single day, unless you live in a bubble, which I don't want to, or live in the rainforest, and they're screwing that up now, too. You need to detox no matter how you eat or who you are. And that's why I've been able to maintain and stay consistent because no matter what's going on in my life, I detox a minimum of four or five times a year. Minimum. Yeah. So oh, and I say minimum because as I got older, I added more. You know, okay. When I was younger, I used to do it two or three times a year. And I found a place that I would go for a detox as one of my vacations every year. I used to go to Optimal Health Institute. That was one of my vacations, you know, but I was going to detox. Without fail, I detox my body no matter what is going on, uh, good, bad, or indifferent. I detox. And that's why my vision is like it is. My skin is like it is. My body is like it is. My thinking is like it is because I don't let the toxicity build up. Do you think that also plays a role with your spirituality? Um, oh, of course, yes. You know, every major religion has a fasting time. And there was a reason they did that, to make the connection. Of course it is. Wow, yeah. You, you talk about how a lot of the stuff um, that you, like when you opened your first restaurant, you didn't have a menu. <laughs> you right. did not have anything planned. You were just kind of like, I'm children, this. I'm one of them. <laughs> Um, but you talk about how you were literally channeling everything from source. And we to all source. do. We all, yeah. we all channel. We just don't stop and listen. We're so busy with trying to hurry up and get everything done and rush, rush, rush and get from A to Z overnight. We all, I don't have any information that you don't have or anybody else. It's all out there in the vibrations. It's what you decide to grab and use. Love that. I love that. What could you tell to your younger self? Knowing everything. Oh, I love that. that. Yeah. Uh, I was asked that question in a book years ago. And uh, I, I wish I had the book here to read it. But it's such a perfect <laughs> answer. Uh, but basically what I was saying is I wouldn't change who I am to make other people comfortable. I think I did that in my younger life. I did. I was always trying to make others. So I changed who I was. And I, I wouldn't do that again. And I don't do it now. I think that's something that we can all um, definitely relate to. You should go on to schools and talk to kids. <laughs> I have, I have, I have. I've spoken um, at a lot of schools and colleges and this is what I love to do. So um, I think I got to go in a minute or two. No, I was actually <laughs> gonna say um, to wrap this up a little bit. Um, I know that you have a lot of stuff on the works right now. You've been sharing a lot of Instagram things that you're kind of working on, different projects, ideas. Where can people explore what you have going on, follow along your journey? Well, first of all, Instagram, uh, you know, and I will be honest, I don't do it all myself. I, in some areas I do fall in that 70. I mean, I love it, but it's not my joy, you know, like the younger people. I'm more of the, I want what I stand and I want it there for years. <laughs> <laughs> That's where my brain is. Yeah. So, um, but uh, Instagram, I'm having a great time with that now. Uh, I am on Facebook. I wouldn't even tell you, know how to tell you get there. I don't even know if I can get more followers, but I am on Facebook. I have a, a website, Shop Karen's. Uh, I have a YouTube channel, uh, Karen Calories, where I have tons of myself. And I have two books, too. I have um, my, one of my first, uh, Cleansing with Karen, uh, Soak Your Nuts. I want every, well, I did that because I wanted everybody to carry the book around and feel comfortable. Guys, you know, get on the train. Yeah, I soak my nuts. Anyway. <laughs> 
But um, I have soaked your nuts for cleansing with Karen. And then I have a, a cooking book, cookbook I did, and it's two books in one. This side is cooked vegan rest mm -hmm. uh, recipes, and this side is raw vegan recipes. Ah. So it's two books in one. So you can kind of move your journey along. Uh, so you can go, uh, get my books through um, Amazon, or you can order them from our website. Uh, let's see what else. Oh, I'm uh, starting a meal program. And some of the food I've been putting up, and I've been kind of stingy about not sharing the recipes, <laughs> because this is going to go on my meal program. I'm going to do boxes of food that we ship all over the world, uh, all over the country, not over the world. Um, so we're going to do boxes of food that you can order. Uh, I'm going to do the grab and go. I'm not going to do another sit down restaurant. I'm okay. done with that. You know, it's like giving a party every night. I loved it, but I'm done. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to have the grab and go where you can come in and pick up food, but you can also, I'm going to encourage the box of food because once again, it's that coming in doing the wheatgrass once a week and thinking you're healthy. I'd like the people to see what it's like to do it for a whole week. Yeah. And then you can see a real difference. So I'm working on the box of foods. It's almost done. And that's some of the recipes that I'm putting up the bread I did and some other stuff. Uh, that bread. <laughs> I know the raw bread. It, it will, let me get it out there and, and, and then I'll put the recipe out in a little bit. But I'm working on all of that. Um, I'm doing my detox program where you can order it and do it for yourself online. Um, uh, that's all in my shop, Karen's. Uh, I do uh, bi weekly Zoom meetings, and that's where I used to do the free infos in my home, but now I'm doing it via Zoom, so you can sign in to do a Zoom meeting. I think the next one is coming up either the 16th or the 18th. I'm not sure. We'll advertise it December. There'll be a weekday and a set and a weekend. Um, so I mean, there's lots of ways. I mean, and I do one-on-one -on -one counseling. So I have clients right now all over the world in Colorado and, and France and other places. So I work with people all over the world one-on-one -on -one through Zoom. And uh, I don't know, I'm just trying to be as available as I can. You can always DM me if you have specific questions that I, I'll do the best that I can uh, with answering them. Or you can come onto the Zoom meetings and uh, get your questions answered. Uh, there's a registration, so you can register and then come onto the Zoom meetings. Oh, and uh, you got anything else you can think I should do? <laughs> uh, yeah, you're doing it all. I will say I, I'm really intrigued with the food boxes. So I'm definitely gonna follow up with you. Cause I'm kind of mm -hmm. like, I don't know. that bread. I was like, I want that bread. I want yeah, this bread. You do. I just finished the last of it. I had it here. <laughs> I was like, it was show you. It's so yummy. But, no, and I will be sharing, but I got to get everything in place first. <laughs> you know, I don't want to give away the baby before she's born. Okay. So let me, uh, give me a minute to pull it all together, but I'm working feverly. I did a, um, a, uh, potato pancake that's in the dehydrators right now that I'm making an applesauce and a sour cream to go oh, on. Seriously? Yes. What? This is all <laughs> because all the food that's out there now, so much of it I did 40 years ago and people, and I'm glad everybody's doing it in their versions of it, but I don't want to compete with myself. I want to do all new stuff. So. Oh man, this is going to be great. And you're going to be in the food boxes, including the raw bread and like the. Yeah. The bread's oh going to be there. Oh my okay? God. <laughs> I okay. I'm gonna like email you. I'm gonna be like, I need you to just tell me when it's out because I will order your first box. <laughs> well, some of the things that I'm doing with the come in and grab and go to is, I'm not just. I am going to do the meals, but I'm going to do like you can buy a bottle. I'm doing it in the mason jars of raw pasta sauce, so you can make your own zucchini or buy it or do whatever you want with the sun. I'm going to be more like to help people do their meals at home, and because that's kind of the way the world is going anyway. No, I think that's such a great way. And it's going to encourage people to incorporate more. Raw right. And be more options. responsible for themselves yeah. too. Yeah. Which that's I think is beautiful. That's the beauty of this because, you know, if somebody says, well, how are you preparing for, you know, if everybody has to be vaccinated by, you know what, I can sprout and, and create all the protein and calcium in my kitchen that I need. I have dehydrators. I can make food for the next three years if I need to, you know, this is, this lifestyle and I make something from start to finish and don't throw anything out. So that's the beauty of raw foods. It's very sustainable in all types of whatever the world is going through. Definitely. So, well, you are a joy. Oh uh, no, you are, are. Thank you so much for chatting with me. I'm so happy that I got to connect with you and able to talk about your story. It's so, so inspiring and empowering. Um, I like, I'll finish with what I finished with. I just like to remind people that if you don't take care of your body, the most magnificent machine you'll ever be given, where will you live? Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> okay.
take care of yourself. Um, I will continue to follow along on Instagram and I will let your team know once this goes up so that you guys can look. Thank you. Bye, Bye sweetheart. Take, take care. Bye-bye.